Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm here with my wife. Gloria, Praise God. We, we've been sharing our 10 years journey with you. Now, before going to today's edition or today's episode, can we call forth and okay. request for our daily bread? Are you ready? Yes. We join our faith with yours right now as you make this word declaration with us. Say, Father. Father. I demand right now. I demand right now. My daily bread. My daily bread. It's coming to me. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everything I need today. Everything I need today is supplied from heaven. It's supplied from heaven. And I receive it. And I receive in it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. Now we 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 stopped at um, I don't know now. <laughs> the word. <laughs> Praise the word. Living your life based on what God, God. let God give you a vision. Yes. And He gives you vision through His word. Yes. And so you okay, you were we're talking about checks now. I think yes. that's what led us yes, yes. into all this. So go on, go on. You know, I just remember the scripture when um Abraham, uh, yeah. not Abraham, uh, Adam. The Bible says God made a woman, his wife was fit for him. In, in the process of life, you will meet several people and your checklist must be on. Mm -hmm. Your checklist must be based on the word of God. Because for me as well, I had my own checklist yeah. and you know, when I had calmed down <laughs> to start praying about your proposal, I realized that really he was just check score points. I check again. He was just passing, you know, all these things that God had talked to me about. So it's very important that as you're working with the Lord, the husband is going to give to you. The wife is going to give to you will be the one that is suitable for you. It will be the one that is fit for you. The one that will run with the vision mm. and the purpose that God has already given to you. He will be building these things inside of you as you walk with him, as you are led of him. And then your, whether it's a lady or a guy will just come in and two of you will just be going in that direction. Because another prayer I used to pray to God back then as a, as a young girl was, Lord, you're teaching me so much. Yeah. I'm learning so much. I don't want any man that will just come and mess it all up. I used to pray this sincere prayer and I'll tell God, I said, as you're training me, as you're teaching me, as you're helping me to dig deep and know about you personally, please be working on my husband. Yeah, very true. I didn't know who that husband was going to be. Very important But prayer. every time I prayed, <laughs> I would pray about my husband. Anytime I'm listening to the word in church, any topic that they are talking about, I will have to connect it somehow. I'm like, ah, Lord, I'm excited about what you're teaching me. And so teaching me right now, please be teaching my husband. So that the process, you know, it will be kind of like easy. We'll have a flow. We'll recognize ourselves when the time comes. You know, like you said, um, God will just blind your eyes to a certain thing until the time comes. Yeah, let me, let me, let me read that scripture. In Genesis, yes. Genesis chapter 2. Yes. It says from verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. You know. I will make him and help meet for, for him. him. Now, God made this decision. This is very important. Now, I'm sure many of you have not noticed this in the scriptures before. Now, God says, I will make him. So it was God's wisdom. Mm. I said, it's not good for the man to, to be here. Man. And that's, man, Adam didn't go to God and say, God, look, this thing is too heavy for me. I need help. No, God looked at him and said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a help. Now, that's what we're trying to say. God yes. said, I will make him a help that is suitable for him. Yes. Now, after God said that, look at what God did next in verse 19. Mm. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever 
whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Now watch. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast, every beast of the field. But for Adam was not found an help meet for him. You understand that? Now, God says, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a help meet. And God went to work. Yes. So God went to the ground. He formed something. Mm. And then he brought the thing to Adam. Adam, I got um, a visitor for you. <laughs> and then Adam will look at this and, and spend time with this and look at this. And then it's just a lion. Lion. Yeah, the lion is an animal that I said, okay, it's not suitable. I'll make another one. He made something else and brought it. And then Adam, oh, hey, hey, you know, like, it's just a cow. Now, God, you know, we have this mentality that God and Adam were just doing a naming ceremony. So God lined up all the animals. Adam, what well, is okay? This one has two ears and long ears. Oh, I call it rabbits. Oh, rabbits, okay. Now nah, your name is Rabbits because Adam have called you Rabbit. No, God, <laughs> God was actually looking for a suitable help for Adam. It is that such that produce all the animals and the birds that we see. Now, Adam went through all of them and still didn't find one that suited him. Now, watch this. So, I'll read that verse 20 again. And God gave and adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field but for adam there was not found and help meet for him and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall on adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and close of the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the lord god had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man now watch this 23 now and adam said now when he woke up this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man now watch this so god after making everything, God said, wow, we need to employ another wisdom. Mm -hmm. And what's the wisdom? Take from inside him. Yeah. So he made Adam sleep, took a rib from him, formed a woman. Then he brought her to him. And I can imagine God staying back to watch. To watch. And Adam wakes up and he sees this new species he has never I seen before. He used to explain this <laughs> already. He sees this species he has never seen before. And then he said, who are you? And he said, you, who are you? <laughs> ah, oh, wait, what, what's going on here? Yes, no, I touched her. She did, she was touching her. No one has done this before. <laughs> you know, and then he was like, <laughs> he was like, oh, come, what's going on here? You know, everything was just blending. Mm -hmm. Everything was just blending. And he found joy. joy and he was like, ah. Okay, you know what? Now, I don't think God just allowed Adam to spend five minutes with each of those animals. Only God knows how long he spent with each one before he comes to a conclusion. It is his conclusion that puts a name to it. So Adam was just toying around with Eve and I you know, said, so this... This one is is me. <laughs> so like this one is born of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She is woman. Hallelujah. And God said, We found what we've been looking for. Now, now literally, I think that's what God did to me. So <laughs> okay, so I was looking for okay, where is this where is she? You know, where where is this wonderful wife? <laughs> and and, and God made me sleep for many years. Why <laughs> <laughs> the little baby? The baby you thought was too small. Was yeah, when, when he opened my eyes, and I like, wait, oh, this this one is now born. 
Praise oh God. My God. No, but but but, but, God is, God but get is, get the gist here. The Lord will give you what is suitable for you. And you, you see, that's why you don't marry by chance. That's what we're trying to explain to you. Check out your checklist. Mm. There are there are things, and, and and you know, some people are so careless. Mm. They don't even think these things. It's they don't think, yeah. you know, what kind of wife I want, mm. am I going to get married to? Yeah. Now, that's why we're sharing these things with you. Before I thought of getting married, I've had my dealings with the Lord, where family is concerned. And I've realized that, hey, this is, this can destroy your destiny. It can change things for you. This can destroy your destiny. Mm. This was what destroyed Esau's destiny. Mm. Esau's destiny was open okay until he married oh no 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 the god says um esau have i loved jacob uh, jacob have i loved esau have i hated when did he say that have you checked what god said when they were in the womb was this he says look the older one will serve the younger, the younger one and that's not a curse it is you human beings that have made it, a, it, it. because god didn't because. say he will be a servant no god just said the younger one will be great and the older one will be will not be as great, great as, as the, the young younger. one he didn't say the elder one will not be great at all he just said look he was telling the wife when god speaks to us we interpret it the way we understand it and we interpret it based on the knowledge and information that we are exposed to yes. so here god telling this woman watch out two children are coming out of your home and the lord explained that thing to me he said because that was the third generation of abraham god was aware that satan was going to attack that generation because of the abrahamic blessing yeah. Because Satan understands the patterns of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he Satan knows that ah, God worked with Isaac. Ah, if he works with the next generation, then you see this lineage, they are they are established in God. I can't do anything, anything about it. So Satan, God knew Satan was going to come for what that generation. So God gave her twins and then he said put your eye on the younger one that's between god and rebecca now put your eye on the younger one because god knew satan was going to attack the first, the first one now it doesn't mean god condemned esau now if esau can rise and overcome the challenge of the devil he will be a great man see that yeah. and <clears throat> but then esau began to live a careless life spiritual things didn't matter, matter to him. him that was his choice that was yeah. not god's choice god. one striking thing god said to me i saw it in scriptures was the fact that you know esau quickly went to marry mm. from amongst the canaanites mm. and they had been warned they had been warned so. from abraham's yeah. time god had warned them but it's out of his disobedience. Yeah, what is wrong with them? Are they not human beings? Well, you know, believers think like that. Say, what is wrong? Human being is human being. Ah mm. Not every human being is a human being. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you today, not every human being you see walking on the streets is mm. really a human being. It's not suitable for you. You, 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 you see, that's why you need the eyes of God. Yes, to know the one that is for you. So it's so hurried and married. Mm. And... That's when God says, ah, uh ah. -uh. But you know the truth. Mm. Esau heard when Isaac was telling Jacob, don't marry from around these people. Go to your uncle's house, Uncle Laban. Esau was his dropping. He heard. Go to your uncle Laban. Go and marry from there. Go and marry one of his daughters. And Jacob said, thank you, sir. Esau heard that. Left that place. I went. Do you know what he did? He said, mm, my, my parents were not pleased with the wives I, I married. married. I'll go and marry another one. Mm. He heard where the father the said, go to. Was. He said, no, let me go to Ishmael. 
Jacob went to Laban and guess what? Laban had two daughters and Jacob liked the younger daughter. So who was the second daughter for? So many God prepared for Esau in the eventuality that his mind, he will take charge. That's why they say, guard your heart with all diligence. If Esau had guarded his heart, even at that, even though he was married, yes. at that point, because he still went to marry another, uh -huh. Uh -huh. if at that point he had told himself, look, let me beat Jacob to this. Yes. Let me run to Uncle Laban's house. Uh -huh. And then he runs to Uncle Laban's house. He finds Leah. Uh -huh. And then he marries Leah. Uh -huh. I believe God would have repaired his life. And let me even please my father. Since yeah. they were not pleased with my With choice the former before. one. But see, he went went the other way so it wasn't because god said anything bad he chose choice. the life he Your wanted will. to live it's very important your choices how did we get you <laughs> <laughs> we talked about checklist and how that god will give you someone that is suitable, suitable. yeah so we say not everybody is suitable not for everybody you. Suitable. so you must have a vision yes. you must know you must have a tradition mm. And these things will be built in you by God. By God is your. F That's why I see you don't live a careless life until when you want to get married, you Pastor, man of God. Serious. I want to get married. Please help me ask God, which the who is is this man? Hey, have you prepared for a for good it. man? Yes. Yep. Everybody. Everybody wants to marry a good man. Yes. Every woman wants to marry a good man. Mm -hmm. Every man wants, wants to, to marry, marry a good woman. woman. But have right. you prepared yourself? To handle, handle a good man or a good woman. Exactly Very what important. the Lord told me to yeah. as a young girl because I kept talking to I, I kept talking to God about marriage. And then the Lord told me, He said, This is just a detour. Yeah. We'll come back to this. He told me, He said, You've been talking to me about I want this, I want that. Because I literally used to write it down. I had a diary where I used to just write things yeah. about marriage. Yeah. And the kind of husband I, I I saw in scriptures and I saw spiritual people living the life yeah. and I desired to also live the life, you know. So God told me one day, he said, What why why do you think I would trust my son into your hands? Like, if you want to marry a good man, then you should work on yourself so that when I give you that good man, you're not you turning into a bad man. Exactly. You <laughs> So the work will start with you. Yeah. You have to be prepared. Life is a, is a journey, it's in phases, and, and, and you must and. be prepared for every stage. You don't just wait and say, oh, when I get married, then I'll be a good wife. Be a good lady. Yeah. Be a good man. Be a good single person. A Being good, good. Being good is mainly about character, character formation. Yes, yes. And that's just subjecting yourself to the word of God. What God says do, you do. What he says don't do, you don't do. You just train yourself in this light. And then God, who is faithful, will give you your kind. And then he says, you shall make your way prosperous. prosperous. You shall make your marriage way prosperous well, how do you make it prosperous the book of the law shall, shall not, not depart, depart out of your mouth meditate there in day yeah, yeah. so what has god said to, to you? you keep it before your eyes you'll be so focused if you are like this True. you would be you will be checking everything that comes your way. You'll be checking but, wait, you know, you know, your friends. Oh, that's what I was about to yes. say. You you won't have much friends. Mm -mm. So if you if you want to have everybody, if you want everybody to like you, ha ha, you're in trouble already. <laughs> it's good. Because wait, wait, the more you work with God, the more you streamline. Yes. And it's not everybody that can cope with that kind of like, lifestyle yes. with you. Sometimes it's very low. It's, I mean, people get turned off. People yes. just like, I beg your own is too much. You know that kind of a thing. But you see, you're fighting for your destiny. Exactly. Later on, later, you know, this, this, this is the attitude we've, we've, we've had. People may not understand you today, but just make sure you're walking in righteousness. In truth. Walk in righteousness, walk in truth. Tomorrow, you will build the canopy that they will still come and rest. And hide under yes so you don't even get offended when mm -hmm. they don't understand mm -hmm. you you don't get offended when they when they don't when they mistreat you mm -hmm. just keep walking in righteousness be focused. be focused you will build the canopy mm -hmm. 
that will cover them in the day of trouble. Mm. Just like Joseph. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, go on. Hallelujah. Praise <coughs> God. So, back to checklist. So, it's like you're telling the story, I'm doing the teaching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> so you you actually also passed on the you know you know like I was saying the more I fellowship with God yeah. about my pastor then the more relaxed I began to feel the more safe I began to feel like oh I'm actually going to be safe with this person yeah. as a husband now not just as a pastor because there are two different things. And I know that this man is, I already, nobody needs to tell me about that. I have experienced him, his submission to God and it has rubbed off on me positively. I have seen him deal with situations. I've seen him face challenges. And I was like, okay, I'm going to finally consider this thing. So I told him, I didn't tell you at that time where we had that yeah, conversation yeah. because I was still, Processing. you know, it was part of my, <laughs> process and all so we started seeing different people too went to our spiritual parents they are now my spiritual parents as well that's daddy and mommy Kure. they talked to us we went to pastor abba mm. he spoke with us as well you know with my mom your dad and your mom and <laughs> funny enough these were people that say, your dad already saw <laughs> <laughs> he already saw us since <laughs> that these two people <laughs> and he, he had no doubts about it at all and he, he specifically loved the fact that I, I, I am called Gloria because that's your grandmother's oh, name you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like oh she taught him about God Yeah. so he was like I hope I'm another sure another you, Gloria yes, is coming into the yes, to teach my grandchildren <laughs> about God. And you know, in the process of being your daughter, I got to meet your, yeah, your dad as yeah. well. I got to know your family members. So somehow they were all just excited about this thing. So when I eventually agreed, like several months later, we started okay, looking forward to fixing date and all of that. And by the spirit of God, we fixed the date for January. Yeah. Then sometime, I think that's, that should be like February when you asked me. I answered it was like September, October. Mm, I think that was like April or March or April. Was it? I think um, it, it was early in the year. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so when I eventually agreed, I think that was like September, October. Like, okay, let's, let's work this thing out. And then I spoke to my pastor's wife as well. My pastor was aware my my department everybody every leader that i was subject to was aware that's also important you have to carry the people in your life along and that's the thing yes. about testing the word of god yes you've got to bring it open, open. you, can't, everybody you can't hide it you can't say i don't want people to know mm. uh, mm -hmm. if you have if you've come if you're convinced mm. that you've heard from the lord then put it put in it the open, open. Let yeah. it be tested. Yeah. Say anything you want to say. Yeah. Throw any arrow you want to throw. Mm -hmm. Because it's not you that will defend the word. He, he will defend, defend his word. word. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are afraid of the word being attacked, mm -hmm. then you're not convinced of the one you heard. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. <coughs> you know. So we had our first test by the word after we had, you know, passed through all these tests, all these people in our lives. My mom was very receptive to the whole thing because, like he said, make your life open. Right from when I was in school and I entered this fellowship, my entire family knew about these passionate people and they knew about my pastor then. So my mom was, you know, really in touch with him and all of that. So she was cool with everything. By this time, my dad had passed, but then mommy was there. And then my uncles were there as well. So they did all the drilling. They did, everybody did their part and it was wonderful. So we set out for January. And then sometime in November, I started feeling this sharp pain. Ah, we can't go in into my that. Tummy. <laughs> we go into that right for... now. Because our time is oh. up for today. Okay, we're going to continue. Tuned. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Now, oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, Thank you for the confirmations you're bringing to a lot of people watching this. 
Thank you for the renewal in their minds. Thank you for the positioning that you are bringing to them. We declare it is well with everyone watching. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. God bless you. Bye.